Welcome to my ninth video tutorial on using Nina. In this one, we're going to continue looking at a running sequence. So this is my observatory setup, which has a roll off roof. And I've started the sequence to connect all the equipment and cool it down and wait for dusk. And that's where it's currently at. One of the things to look out for are these little X symbols, which are like warnings. And if you look at the sequencer tab, and expand out the sequence. You can see that there's a little X next to connect all equipment. And this happened because my camera didn't automatically connect. There's a problem with the camera driver and I need to get it fixed. So I had to manually connect the camera and carry on. And when that happens, because I said if it fails to exit, this little stop button became a play button because the sequence got stopped. And then what I had to do was connect the camera, press play again, and it carried on. This sequencer window has other useful information. For instance, if I scroll down and look at the waiting loop, it says wait until nautical dusk. It actually computes when nautical dusk is, which is just past six o'clock, and it tells me usefully that I've got 42 minutes before this loop condition is satisfied and it will carry on to do the imaging part. And if you look at the imaging tab in here, remaining 4150, so it tells you how much time there is before that condition is met. If I went back to the sequencer and I hit stop, notice where all the tick boxes are. If I just press play again, it'll just carry on from where it left off. One can also edit a sequence while it's running. At the moment, it's going around this wait until dusk loop, but further down is the imaging part. And for instance, I can change my acquisition. So for instance, I've got two smart exposures taking five exposures of 600 seconds of S2 and HA. And for instance, I might want to add an O3 to this by duplicating the S2 and just changing the filter to O3. And also, I can reorder if I want to. Or I don't really want to at all and I can delete the instruction entirely. The other thing you can do is you can alter the triggers or the loop conditions. And I think it's safe to do so, so long as you're not executing that part of the program. One reason why you might do this is for instance, if the moon is up one night and you're imaging later on where the moon isn't around at all, and you might, for instance, want to either have narrowband or you might, for instance, want to have an RGB set, which you clearly try to do when the moon is not up. And you would change your filters to red, green and blue and so forth. And what you can then do is say, well, OK, tonight the moon is up, so I'll do narrowband and I can just delete that or vice versa. And so you can save both of these into your sequence and then on the night you can just delete the one you don't want to run. So we've got to come back to this when it gets dark. So we pick up again and the system is just slewing to the target. So it's gone through the safe wait loop and these little double arrows means it skipped it because it didn't need to do anything within the loop. And we're just getting on to the centering part as you can see here. So if I look at the instructions, it first will do an autofocus after slewing the mount, and then it'll do slew and center. So I'm going to go to the imaging tab to see what's going on. So the autofocus and the plate solving tabs pop up over the top of the current screen, and they will disappear a little bit later on. So as you can see, it's done quite a nice curve and these little red bars are showing the degree of variability in the star sizes as it tries to compute it. And the imaging tab is showing the autofocus screens that have been grabbed. So once it's found what it thinks is the correct position, which is around 1704, you can notice the position now is 1704. It does a confirmatory one and checks that everything's cool. And now it's going to plate solve. So it'll take a quick image and it will show the error down here. So that'll plate solve. It's saying that the error is pretty small and it'll do another one. And hopefully that will be there. Deco is less than a pixel. 
and and it says at the bottom it says start guiding. If I click to image and the guider, my guider pulses should start coming along here. This shows both the corrections and also the RA and deck values and it also shows a little triangle when a dither event happens. Once it's stabilized it will start taking the acquisition and in the sequence of view if I scroll down here, if I collapse a few of these and open this one up so you can see it's restored guiding and on the narrowband exposures it's starting to do this one here S2 600 seconds and because I'm using focus offsets it can focus with the loom filter in a fairly short period of time and then it's using focus offsets to move it and that's done under options autofocus use filter offsets is on and there are the offsets down there it's starting to take images and we'll come back when it's completed so the first exposure is in the guiding graph looks pretty awful but when you actually look at the guiding state it's only 0.56 arc seconds RMS because I've chosen quite an aggressive angle if I choose plus or minus two arc seconds you'll see that's a little bit more reasonable the display here defaults to one to one so if you want to see the full screen hit that you can see the amp glow coming out the side here and by default the auto stretch is on automatically so this is the image without stretch and you can see a few white dots maybe and with auto stretch you have here so there's a few little nebulas a little loose cluster and a lot of amp glow that will come out with calibration this is now doing the second exposure and it will continue to do so until such times that several events trigger special actions. If we go into the sequencer and look at the triggers, autofocus after temperature change, restore guiding, that's a trigger that means if the guiding ever stops for any reason it will restore it, meridian flip when it crosses the meridian, center after drift, in this case every time it takes a picture it plate solves it and if it's too far away from the original target center it'll recenter it and autofocus after a time period of 90 minutes as a fail safe. On the meridian flip just to take a look at the target itself meridian flip is not for some time yet not until nine o'clock time and if you look at the meridian flip itself it says flip time and it says between 2113 and 2123 so it tells you when it's going to happen. So I have flipped over to my imaging rig that's in the middle of the backyard and this one is doing much shorter exposures of only two minutes each and it's going round in a cycle red green blue red green blue whereas the other one is doing the much longer narrowband exposures and again I'm using focus offsets for each of my filters so I can go around this loop nice and quickly without any time penalty for autofocus. If I go back to the imaging tab there are a couple of other things I want to show you. The image history gives you a thumbnail of each of the images with an indication of the star sizes and the mean values. And the HFR history is actually quite useful because it shows a trend of star sizes. So if they're slowly getting fatter, that's an indication that maybe the temperature's changing and you haven't autofocused frequently enough. And sometimes if the star count just disappears and falls off a cliff, it's an indication of some light cloud coming over or condensation on the optics or something like that. You can also see it's the last autofocus result and you can see it's a nice curved shape, has a very high correlation coefficient. And you can also see what's going on in the sequence, where it's at, what's been completed. And it's a quick tally, but the most comprehensive tally is in the sequencer tab itself. And you can see if any of the triggers have been triggered with these little green tick marks and for instance um, autofocus after time 90 minutes it's only 22 minutes into 90 minutes so not yet but there was a center after drift it appears and there was a restore guiding and there was an autofocus after a temperature change and it says at the moment that after the last exposure the temperature has changed at half a degree since the last autofocus and when that exceeds one degree it'll trigger another autofocus. And this will happily go around this loop until such times as the loop conditions are not met 
In other words, we get to astronomical dawn, or the altitude sets below 40 degrees, or, well, the altitude is above the horizon. The reason I have both of these is that my physical horizon can be less than 40 degrees, but if the seeing is bad, I try not to go below 40 degrees. So perhaps this one's a little bit redundant, but there are a few places on my horizon which go above 40 degrees, and hence I have the two loop conditions together, which means I never have a situation where it's trying to image through an obstacle. The next event coming up is going to be the meridian flip. And if you look at the telescope panel here, it's in just over an hour's time. And in the sequencer, looking at the target, it's going to occur around about nine o'clock. We need to double check the settings. I'm using a paramount, so I have to use the Sky X. And the meridian flip settings typically have to occur within these boundaries between the magenta and red. Now, if I look at the physical settings on the Sky X, it's in this particular menu called Mount Slew Limits, and I can flip between one side and the other and they're both set to a third of an hour. In other words, 20 minutes. So if I shrink that down, and let's just check the settings. So I need to go into Options, Imaging, and the Meridian Flip settings at the top here. So anything between four and 10 minutes. So it'll try to do a Meridian Flip after four minutes, and if it can squeeze an extra exposure in without exceeding 10 minutes, it will do so otherwise it will flip. So that's the area in which it's going to flip. Because my telescope can use side of pier, I've got this selected to on. Some telescopes don't support this feature and you have to, in effect, do a slew once the telescope's past the meridian and that will cause it to flip. And recenter after flip is a useful thing to do because anything like a cone angle error on the telescope will cause a misalignment of the image. And the last option here, autofocus after flip, if I had a moving mirror designed telescope, I would select on because sometimes the mirror shifts after flipping and it needs focusing again. So we're going to wait until nine o'clock and pick up the video again as it does the flip. You join me on my observatory system and we're just coming up to the point of doing a meridian flip. And if you look at the meridian flip line, it should be flipping between 2108 and 2118. And the time now is 2108. But because I'm doing 10 minute exposures, I can just about squeeze in an exposure before it gets to 2118. So I imagine that once it's done this 10 minute exposure, it will immediately do a flip. So I'm just going to pause the video and rejoin a few seconds before the end of the exposure. So we rejoin the video a few seconds before the end of the exposure, as you can see here. I'm just going to go into the Imaging tab and see what happens. It downloads the image and it now goes into the Meridian Flip routine. So it's paused the Auto Guider, it's passed the Meridian, which is checked, do the flip. So at the moment the scope is flipping, so if I look at the Sky X and zoom out it's coming across around the other side. It's coming round to position, which is good. It's switching the filter because it's going to do a plate solve and it's recentering itself. So this involves taking a short exposure, about five seconds in this case, plate solving, and then a micro adjustment to get it right. It's done that, so it's now centered. It's uh, setting the first filter in the imaging sequence and the guider starts up. The guiding starting and it waits for the settle and then it will start the next exposure. And there we have it. Click on glider and it's now guiding once more on the other direction and it started the next exposure. So on the sequencer, if I scroll down, it's now starting this hydrogen alpha exposure. And it will keep on doing this until these conditions are met, which are 
just up here loop until astronomical dawn and above the horizon so there we have it I'm going to conclude that video right now and of course once it finishes it will bomb out and come down to the shutdown routine which similar to the ones I showed you before disconnects the equipment after parking and closing the dome and warms the camera gently. Thank you for watching.